Hello, and welcome to the interview with part and parcel artist Kenny Collins. First, we want to say a really big thank you to all the people who helped organize the CCBC Arts Pathway Festival for 2021. And remind any CCBC students that if they email an entry by Sunday, May 9th, with their CCBC name and ID to the Arts Pathway at ccbcmd.edu, they are eligible to win CCBC One card credits. And those are good at the vending machines, CCBC bookstores, dining halls, and the CCBC printers. And remember to check out any of the other wonderful events that are happening during this festival. Thank you for tuning in and let's get to that interview. All right, hello, and um, welcome to today's quick talk with our artist, Kenny Collins, um, who is on exhibit at the Essex Gallery from now until June 11th. And Kenny has been kind enough to talk with us today a little bit about her work. So I'm gonna go ahead and ask some questions and Kenny will respond. Um, and if you are interested in seeing more about Kenny in the exhibition, we will be having a guest artist talk on May 6th. Um, so, and you can get information about that on the gallery website, which is the galleries at ccbc.com. Okay, thank you, Kenny, for being here with us today. And can you please explain your process and how your work has changed over time? Sure. Um, I became a visual artist about 20, 25 years ago. And um, after a couple of other career type things and um, my process um, is I, I'm 90 some percent self-taught. So my process was basically learning stuff. I would find artists that I admire and, and look at their work and try to copy how it was done, not necessarily the actual thing, but I would, um, uh, my, the painters that I loved at the time, Nicholas de Stahl, Susan Rothenberg, I would just try to figure out what the hell it was that was attractive to me and then how to, how to do that. And so I never really learned to use materials in a, um, from an, an academic standpoint. So everything that I've done, I've kind of made up as I go along, which is, is kind of the way I've always done everything in my life. So it's basically my life process as much as anything else. And the joy in that is that um, once you get something, it's really yours. Um, you, you, I mean, I've always, I, I don't think maybe for six days I used uh, oil paints because, and then I quit because I couldn't stand the, the solvents and stuff, the smells and the, the fumes and all that. But then I um, just started using acrylic paint and people were absolutely flabbergasted when they found out that I was using acrylics instead of oils because I tried to make them look like what I had seen that I liked. And so I just mixed all kinds of crap together. It turned out that I was lucky. It was mostly archival and, and that everything I made stayed together and was a product. It was a saleable product. And so the process of doing that, the way that has changed over time is I've just garnered and gathered a whole bunch more experience using the things that I like to use and then what I did in terms of being an artist, being, you know, responding to the world and, and myself was that I would find a material that meant something to the metaphor or the idea that I was trying to explore, was trying to figure out. I, I never know what I'm going to do until I do at least the first several of a series because I don't really, if I knew what I was going to do, I wouldn't bother doing it. It would be really boring. So I find ways to have the materials fit with um, with the subject. Uh, the quickest um, uh, example of that is that after taking some river trips down the uh, Colorado River and the Grand Canyon, I, I wanted to make work based on the method by which the canyon came into being, which is fire and time and pressure and water. So I created this thing where I used cheapo uh, tissue paper and wadded it up you know, sometimes a foot high and then painted it with inks and colored it in all the ways. Then I pressed it for a very long time and it, it went from one foot down to an inch and a half. And then I would paint all that with wax so that I could burn it so that it would fuse into a single thing. And so they look, it looked like rock. There'll be some pictures of this and then more explanation of that uh, during that artist talk on the sixth, but it was, it, that's the kind of thing my, my process has changed that I'm more directed and more um, involved in what I do because I know more. And uh, so 
that's basically how it's all happened. <laughs> That's cool. Thank you. I think that's a great thing for our students to hear that you don't have to know what your what your outcome is going to be, that sometimes the best part of it is the journey yeah. um, and then learning through that. Um, OK, and so that kind of answers a little bit of my next question, but well, well, I'll ask it anyway. Um, what drew you to the concepts that you explore in your work? That is um, ever since the sort of this first very first body of work I made, which is reacting to the world. I, um, I made landscape paintings, very abstracted, but for me, obviously, landscapes. And I was very successful at those. They sold, people loved them. It was, it was exciting that after, you know, not knowing what I was doing, the response was positive in terms of people wanting to have them in their houses and, and stuff. And, but um, that got a little old after a while. It got boring to do the same thing, but I was really scared because I didn't know what else to do or how to do anything. So I let my intellect enter into my process and, and stuff. And um, so the thing that was happening in my life at the time, I was ha having this garden built in this urban Baltimore backyard that I had. And there were all these amazing plants. And I don't know jack about plants or gardening or anything, but I was really intrigued by the idea that if you got a plant, it came from a seed. So where did the first seed come from? You know, how, how did seeds, what's a seed? Where did it come from? How is it? Mm -hmm. It's like the chicken and egg thing. Um, and so I started thinking about where do I get images from? Where ideas come from? And so I had all these landscapes that I, by that point I hated. And so I just started painting on top of them. And they were my seeds. They were the seeds that would make the new thing. Uh, and most of the bodies of work I did subsequent to that began with some sort of, um, idea or metaphor so that there was a I need a reason to do stuff I just I just can't make stuff I need to be looking for something to understand or um, make sense of in, in a, to myself mm -hmm. and, um, and then it just kept going and going cool. I love that idea that the your initial painting started out as like the germinating product. That, that that's that's so interesting. Um, so that also leads me into my next question, um, which is for the exhibition on display at the gallery, part and parcel. What is your theme slash central focus of the work? Um, this is actually maybe one of the most um, real world things that I've ever done in terms of responding to something that's actually happening in the world around me. And, and um, part and parcel is about integration. It's about one thing being integral to another, that, you, that there are things that are so entwined that they cannot be separated. Mm. And the, um, the problems that I think we're facing worldwide, everywhere in your little corner of the, your backyard or anywhere else you know, across the universe, is that we are, that humans believe that, that they have, humans have been led to believe that we are separate from nature, that we are not integral, we are not part and parcel of a um, much broader, much more beautiful, much more meaningful whole. And I think a lot of the problems with the land and the water and populations and um, hatreds comes from this sense that we are different from the world around us. And so that's kind of what I, started making the work about and um that's that's it <laughs> that's, that's pretty much the entire kernel of, of what all the work is about and for me one of the um mainstays of myself as an artist over many years has been um making images of and thinking about birds and bird migration so um, much of the work in part and parcel is about seeing the world from a bird's perspective okay I like that. Oh, thank you. Um, okay, so my last question is, what advice would you give to emerging artists? Wow. Um, mostly, doesn't matter. I think it's, I mean, I started emerging when I was in my 40s. So don't worry about how old you are or when it's going to happen for you or whatever. Um, um, trust your hands, trust what your hands will do. Um, I, like I said, when I stopped making landscapes, I thought my life was over and nobody would ever buy another painting again. But actually the seed, the circle paintings that I did at the time was what actually launched the career that I have, which because I got in a magazine, New American Paintings. I got 
all kinds of representation around the country. Uh, I got an international co uh, commission. So, um, and I was sure nobody was going to want these things because they were so personal and so odd. But uh, it, it, that's the stuff that sort of got me started in that way. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is um, that I think it's really important and kind of comes with a particular emotional maturity, rather, is to learn to really objectively assess what you do. Yeah. Don't hate what you do. Don't love what you do, but actually learn to look at it and, and look long at look at, long at other people's work, look long at yourself and, and ask yourself if you say, oh God, I like that. Well, then why? What is it that you like? Or holy crap, I can't imagine doing that. You know, and it's and why not? What, what is it about that that is off-putting? Um, and then you'll be in a position to to be your for one of a for using it but your authentic self to be be the self that you bring to the work knowing that you're um you're more in touch with it because you're more honest about it so and emerge <laughs> i love that it's it's wonderful to you know put that forth that the best thing is to be honest about yourself and your work and and that i think is what most likely draws people to yours. There is this wonderful sense of honesty in addition to the um, beauty of the aesthetic uh, that comes out in the process. So, um, so I'm very glad you agreed to do the exhibition in the space and we're so happy to have you. And um, thank you for talking today. And uh, we'll be presenting this at the Arts Pathway Festival. And just once again, another plug, um, there is the guest artist talk where Kinney will talk more about her work in more depth and detail on May 6th, um, you can check out the gallery's website, which is the galleries at ccbc.com. There will be an event link up so you can click on the link and it'll send you an email with Zoom invite. So um, thank you again for coming to see our, our small mini talk and uh, I hope everyone has a wonderful day. Back at you. <laughs>